algae-based fuels have the potential to be big business. Like ethanol, they can provide clean energy, but they don't require the use of farmland or filtered water. Instead, they can be grown in labs, in tanks, or in the desert. And since they've been proven as an alternative source for jet fuel, gasoline, and diesel, algae startups have sprung up from Florida to Hawaii. One of the things our fuels do is they dramatically reduce the carbon footprint for every mile driven. And it, it, it's, it's one of the things that gets the company out of bed in the morning. Jonathan Wolfson is the CEO of Solazyme, an algae oil company near San Francisco. Solazyme has developed its own strains of algae to produce crude oil. Crude oil can be refined in existing facilities without making expensive modifications. The goal? Prices competitive with fossil fuels. Our target cost structure is in the $60 to $80 a barrel of our oil range. But getting costs down is a challenge for all biofuel companies. And the timeline for delivering commercial scale fuel is a moving target. Solazyme feeds the algae with sugars from plants, like wood chips or sugarcane, in an enclosed fermentation tank. In 2008, the startup entered into a partnership with Chevron, giving Solazyme access to the big oil company's refineries and deep pockets. They're also experimenting with algae strains that produce more specialized oils. Like, let's say diesel is your most valuable product at a refinery. We've already delivered oil to some of our refining partners that they've yielded over 80 percent to diesel. That's completely unheard of in petroleum. A different approach is being taken by Sapphire Energy, a San Diego-based company developing algae strains to grow outdoors. Uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time and effort to make our algal strains um, agriculture ready, that they can grow in a, in a wild setting. Um, and New Mexico is plenty wild. Sapphire already has a pilot facility in New Mexico where they can produce small test batches of oil. With the help of private investments and federal money, they are breaking ground on a new 300-acre facility. Both Solazyme and Sapphire are looking to 2012 as the next major deadline for production. One of their biggest potential customers is looking for greener fuel, fast. The Navy has publicly set goals of consuming half of its energy from renewable fuels by 2020. Uh, obviously, we've been talking to industry to make sure that that can happen uh, and that when we set these goals out there uh, to power the fleet with alternative fuels, that there's going to be an industry there uh, that's capable of delivering. The Navy is testing different types of biofuels to see if they live up to their promise. In the spring, they tested an F-18 fighter jet using biodiesel from flower seeds. And in late October, they tested a patrol boat using algae biodiesel from Solazyme. Industry watchers aren't sure if any of the current technologies will succeed, or how long it might take to find out. Advocates say they could have commercial scale within five years, but the Department of Energy puts the number closer to 10. And even if they reach scale, they may not be profitable. Many algae fuel companies haven't made it past the test phase. Meanwhile, the Navy's tests are, in effect, buying up the startup's time to work out challenges, like how to prevent contamination of genetically modified algae strains. Uh, and really what we're looking to do is lead the, the nation, lead the Department of Defense in, uh, in, in seeing that an energy efficient economy is, is uh, results. And we think, you know, by pursuing this uh, biofuel strategy aggressively, that we can do just that. Despite the potential pitfalls, the industry is moving ahead with investment from private foundations, big oil, and government grants. I think it would exist without government support, but I think it would be a much smaller industry and it would move much slower. The mix of government money and the guarantee of an early customer increase the chances that the young algae fuel industry will succeed. But it remains to be seen which startups will have staying power. In New York for MSNBC.com, I'm J.J. Ramberg.